Siwo. Now wait, how are you brothers doing today? So this, great brethren, how are you doing today? So this drop is uh, actually for an esteemed brother. His name is uh, Straight Shooter. You know, always got to show love to those that deserve it. So he asked me a question on and offline, jokingly. <laughs> and I got to pondering. So what this is, my friends, is a response. Let's keep it short. Let's keep it brief. And this is on so-called native indigenous people or persons and let's get into it <clears throat> so uh african and european ancestry or background he sold books um so this is talking about ohio valley so this is the ohio valley native americans okay oftentimes they go overlooked so at several powwows in ohio they were both Discussion genealogy by a person identifying as American Indian, mostly mixed Indians. They say African, but we can determine the so-called black and European background. So, you know, this often came up in question. Uh, many times this discourse includes comments on the likelihood of a degree of relationships between the people and the conversation. This discourse relies on a combination of genealogy and recorded histories local and oral traditions okay you guys got that so moving on to the next page all right so 47 Cherokee stand out clearly in terms of numbers there is a number of historical reasons that might account for the high incidence of Cherokee ancestry being reported I was told by several participants that they were not sure what tribe the ancestry was, but they thought it was Cherokee because that was the most common tribe in the area. Uh, I found this comment repeated several times and for most people who identified the ancestry as included multiple tribes, Cherokee was often one. Several other participants explained that there were so many Cherokees because of the Trail of Tears and the assumption that their ancestry had hidden out rather than be removed. Okay. So you had a lot of Indian removal. All right. So that did happen. And others explained and discovered that while going through the genealogies, people was that some of their ancestry had tried to prove their Cherokee a hundred years ago. In the late 1800s, the United States government was hoping to clear title of lands taken during the Indian removal of the first half of the century. There were still many people claiming that they had missed the removals of the West and still owed money. In order to clear title, the government offered to compensate anyone who could prove their Cherokee. Thousands of people with native ancestry tried to prove their Indian ancestry had Cherokee. In case files they were submitted, United States government often denied them. Boom, boom, boom. The Guillen Miller role is the most common source of Cherokee genealogy research for all the roles because the application required extensive information to be supplied by the applicant between the 27th of August 1906 and May 1909. There were 45,940 applications filed for United States to Canada, Mexico, and Syria. It listed an estimated 90,000 individual applicants. Each qualified applicant received a warrant worth uh, $133.33 for their share of a one-time payment due to them in order for application to be accepted in the role the applicant had to prove descent from a person uh, 1835 that was Cherokee. So yeah, what was called the Henderson role. I requested and studied several of these petitions recognition of Cherokee and found the applicants included several pages of handwritten personal testimony explaining the applicant and Cherokee connection. Each one of these seven that I examined had been stamped denied. And why? Well, they're so-called black men. Uh, determined that Negro, uh, denial was short, determined to be Negro and therefore not Indian. <clears throat> In other cases, it was simply a lack of evidence to be Cherokee. And, you know, you have William Hutton. And so, you know, he just didn't have any connections, I assume. The denied application mostly from the Midwest and Southeast numbered about 30,940. Through this role process, 
the only way to declare oneself Indian east of the Mississippi, if not already registered as Indian, was to claim Cherokee. After going through the process of proving you are Cherokee, it becomes very difficult to tell your friends and family members that you're really a tribe, such as Pickasaw, Mingo, Shawnee. Several of these people I interviewed told me that while one family member insists they're Cherokee, other family members might be Shawnee, Mingo, or Miami. The main point of the Ohio Valley native place was to register as a member of a certain tribe. Official Indian communities were disbanded and removed to Western states. Therefore, the only option for Native people remaining in the Ohio Valley was to attempt to tie themselves to generic Indian categories. There you go. So, hope that explains a few things. And, okay, so we're going to excerpt from this. So we're going to page... Uh, this would be page 39 or 49. I'll leave the page link below. So uh, there were a series of federal government removals from the Ohio Valley that were intended to clear title for all the land. The Wyandotte, Shawnee were the last two American Indian groups to leave Ohio. It is claimed that Indian people did remain in the East. At least three types of communities of Indian survived and developed in the Eastern United States, 18th, 19th century reservation communities in Ohio. Between 1840, the Wyandotte and Upper Sandusky, the Shawnee and Ugalize County, missionary communities in Eastern Ohio, Orovian communities with Christian Delaware or Lenape Indians were developed there, moved to Canada after the Ganadian Massacre. Okay, G-N-A-D-E-N-H-U-T-T-N. The Indian folk communities in Ohio, at least 10 Indian folk communities have been documented. The best known removals were the Trail of Tears of the Cherokees to the south of the Ohio Valley and the Trail of Death for the, to the Potawatomi from the northern Indiana. The Delaware Anderson, Indiana left in 1819 and the Shawnee and Wyandotte in 1830s. So, Indiana really gets its name because there were so many Native Americans that actually coalesced from the the uh, the area, the Ohio Valley, to Indiana. So there's a lot of so-called Native Indigenous in Indiana. Quite a few. Quite a few. But let's go on. Let's see what else we can pull up for you guys. Okay, let's pause that right there. Okay, in the Black Indians, page 152, uh, you have an article on the Trail of Tears, which we were discussing a second ago, for white U.S. citizens in the eastern states, problems presented by Native Americans were solved in a single dramatic stroke, the Indian Removal Act of 1830. It provided for the mass deportation of the five nations from their huge fertile homelands in the southeast. Some 60,000 red and black men and women were deported. Okay, so in a lot of these books, you have African, <laughs> African-American things of that nature. Um, so you have to be very clear and aware of language and people's agenda. But uh, yeah, this says 60,000 red and black men. Okay, so uh, quite a bit of Cherokee were so-called ebony men. And so... At the end of the day, at the end of the day, we'll go into one more page, and that's 153 in the Black Indian. So check that book out. And um, it talks about the Trail of Tears. So 153, okay, the image is up. Eventually deposited on the lands of Arkansas, which is actually a native indigenous word, Oklahoma, that whites consider uninhabitable. Removal meant more than a change and a uh, as an aside, you have um, linguistic cues and they discuss um, different language pattern. This is what this article is about. It's most about linguistic. OK, and then discusses a little bit, you know, the the academic source that I had that I just read from for you guys. Um, and they discuss uh, code switching, which is really interesting. 
and they said that the patterns are similar. And this is when you know they have agendas. They said the patterns are similar for native indigenous people and so-called black people, how they have code switches, how they can actually switch from different linguistic cues and ways of talking around different people. It is what it is. And they said, it's so similar, they're almost the same. Hmm, I wonder why. For Cherokee, it was a, a murderous trail of tears. Okay. Uh, removal meant that there was a change of geography. Fragile cultures were, you know, uprooted by army troops and driven to alien climate and location. For Cherokees, it was a murderous trail of tears. Uh, President Martin Van Buren ordered 7,000 soldiers under General Winfield Scott to move a nation of 14,000 homes were burned, livestock, tools, printing presses, and personal possessions seized and destroyed. That's not true. That is not true. And I can go into detail and in depth why that's not true. Most of the, uh, the assets were actually seized and reallocated to Europeans, mostly white Europeans. Some black people that were part of your bourgeois did have access, but mostly it was seized and be disseminated okay Cherokee men and women and children including 1,600 uh, black Cherokees were prodded uh, westward in midwinter by federal bayonets about 10,000 Cherokees survived but President Van Buren assured Congress that their expulsion had the happiest effects the Cherokees had immigrated with an E without apparent reluctance in the Indian territory of five nations disseminated by their deadly journey face a wilderness. Clearing was necessary before settlements could survive. Those who had left their dead on the long trail across the south to the Mississippi and beyond now had to turn to building new homes. Only a rich cultural heritage and strong families provided fortitude necessary to sustain nations. On their new lands, Indians face new assaults. Whites seeking for profit from the misery appeared in the camps with products to sell. Uh, Native Americans became more dependent upon white goods and values. Government Indian agents regulated their lives and paved the way for intruders. Slavery became even more entrenched and any agents sent by Washington openly encouraged for slavery to be a main economic force. So what's that mean? Well, brothers, it just meant that um, some of the nations, except for the, the, the Seminoles really didn't really mess with slavery like that. However, some of the nations adopted it. Some became very brutal with it. And you had uh, different laws that were passed in 1866 to compensate the native indigenous tribes that had slavery as a mainstay, as a, a way of making money, growing crops and things of that nature. And cash crops specifically so this is history but the reason why uh you have so many people uh that say cherokee is because uh there was money attached to it attached to it uh and some just don't know the tribal lineage that they're from and then you have um let's go into that before we go so then you have an aspect uh back to the article and that's uh page 105 and it says many reenactors and this discusses reenactors uh, so people come from different places you know reenact to make different things clothing shoes and they do dances and things like that and discusses boy scouts too boy scouts because you know you have different badges of things you have to get but it says in 105 many reenactors are white hmm, you don't say many ex-military a lot who do the native, uh, what's that? S-T-U-F-F-A-R-E. Okay. Okay, so the native stuff are ex-military. Um, and why? Partly because history buffs is the basis of reenactment. They go through books, look for dates of types, uh, buttons, and they like to go uh, to museums mostly. Regular people are not interested in this stuff, but a certain trigger guard may be important to the reenactor. 
elsewhere. Others say, I'm just not interested or this is just a weird looking gun, or ugly gun and things of that nature. So you have a lot of reenactors um, that are going to powwows. And we discuss what powwows, their origins from different tribes that never did powwows. So you do have Lakotas, Lenapes, uh, some Cherokee, well, most Cherokees. Okay. They did it. But then you have some Shawnee. Shouts out Nawe. Okay. How you guys doing? Salo. So you have different tribes that did not actually have shamanism. They did not actually do uh, uh, powwows. Um, some of it is recent, and it's just wait for them to get together, and they have them every single year. They have a national powwow, just in case you guys you know, want to know about that. And they also have uh, Native American like awards for movies and film. And I think I showed that to you guys a few months ago. Uh, if you want to submit your film or your work or documentary, uh, there are several paths that you can go to where you don't have to actually deal with uh, Hollywood. So. Shouts out to, um, speaking of that, that would be the brother, um, he did, uh, Birth of a Nation, not the original, the one where he was, uh, he portrayed Nat Turner, okay, some could say that Nat Turner was, you know, somewhat of a, a fictionalized character, some would say that he was real, uh, but there were several Native Indigenous rebellions, and individuals that actually did do exactly what he did. Uh, they will not tell you that in history. But uh, shout out to the movie. It was a very good movie. And he did have a scene where he was in the forest with uh, Native American regalia, face painting, and uh, clothing. So interesting. So uh, I hope this answers your question, Straight Shooter. Um, that's all I have to say. But you can give them this article. And what is the article called? The article, it's from an academic site. You can actually go to Google Scholar and find it. You have to log in. But it is Ohio Valley Native Americans Speak Indigenous Discourse on the Continuity of Identity. And um, that's by Renee Tamburo, I probably butchered his name. So this is uh, the University Graduate School of uh, Indiana University. So, so there you go. And you can also get the other links from the Black Indian book. Uh, just go get the book. And there's several other books that I can actually drop. Uh, if you guys want me to do more videos on uh, Cherokee, Lenape, Lakota, uh, Matisse, Chickasaw, Choctaw, okay, and several, several, several others like the uh, Muskegons here in Michigan, mm, you know, Pueblos. I don't have as many articles on Navajos, uh, but I'm working on that, okay? All right, brothers, I'm out. Keep your heads up. Peace. Say thank you for grace, thank you for mercy, thank you for understanding, thank you for wisdom, thank you for parents, thank you for love, thank you for kindness, thank you for humility, thank you for peace, thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours.